Welcome to my video series on solving the four-dimensional Rubik's Cube with the three-block method. In this episode, we're going to download and set up the Hyperspeed Cube program and go over the basics of the four-dimensional Rubik's Cube. Let's get started with the prerequisites. In order to understand this series, you need to be able to solve a 3x3x3 Rubik's Cube using the CFOP method. Now, you don't need to know full two-look last layer, although it can help, Four look last layer will do just fine. The important part is that you have a good understanding of how to create and insert F2L pairs. That is absolutely crucial. If you can do that, then you're ready for this tutorial. This is the main page for the Hyperspeed Cube program, which is being developed by Hector CE on the Hypercubers Discord server, which by the way, you should join if you have questions or you get stuck. But anyway, it goes through all the features and has some screenshots and stuff. But we just want to click download here. As I'm recording this, the latest release is 1.0.5. I'm on Windows, so I'm just going to click on Windows here. Now you just save it to wherever you want to save it. I'll just put it in there. And it saves it as a compressed zipped file here, so we have to unzip it. So in Windows 11, you can just right click and click extract all, and then extract. Now that it's extracted, it is now in this folder that it created, so just double click here. And this exe in here is the program. But first, I like to create a desktop shortcut just so I can see it on my desktop here. Now let's open the program. But it's going to give you this warning here because it's a random exe file that you downloaded from an unknown publisher. So it's going to, you know, freak out here. But we trust Hackdar, he's a great guy. So we're going to run the program anyway. And this is the Hyperspeed Cube program right here. It has this welcome screen that you can look at for other software and speed solving and stuff. So this is a four dimensional Rubik's Cube or three by three by three by three sort of. It has eight different sides, but right now we can only see seven because if we drew the eighth one, it would sort of be blocking our view. But if you hold down control and click on a side, then you can see the other side and do a four dimensional puzzle rotation like that. So just like on the 3D cube, there are different types of pieces that are on the puzzle. So you have the center pieces, which determine the color of that side. So, you know, white's opposite yellow, blue opposite green, red opposite orange, and purple opposite pink is the new color, the new dimension here. So they don't move in relation to each other, so that's the color that that side will be when the puzzle is solved, just like the 3D puzzle. Next we have the ridge pieces, which have two colors on them, and they have two different positions, so they can be flipped, sort of. There is 24 of these on the puzzle. They behave very similar to 3D edges because they also have two colors and two orientations, which is very nice. Next up we have the edge pieces. These are pieces with three stickers, but they don't really act like corners, but sometimes they do, so they're called edges and not corners, even though they have three colors. And an edge piece can have six different orientations instead of just three, so it makes it a bit harder. And there are 32 of these pieces across the puzzle. Finally, there are the corner pieces. There are 16 corner pieces on a 4D hypercube, and each one has four colors, so it's a four colored piece. This is the purple, yellow, orange, blue piece on this side here. Each one has 12 orientations, which is way more than the six of the 3C. So those are the different types of pieces on the puzzle. So be familiar with those, just like how when you learned the 3D cube, you got familiar with those type of pieces. So this puzzle also has 3D cubes from one to nine. So let's click on the three by three here. And if you go to um, settings, view, presets, it should come with these presets by default. And let's click on the unfolded front view. So on the right here, we have a view of the three by three by three Rubik's cube, but it's sort of been flattened into two dimensions. The stickers have been spaced out and it looks all weird like this. And because it's weird like this, we've actually hidden the blue side. If we showed the blue side right now, it would sort of be overlapping the rest of the sides, which isn't very helpful for solving, and that's why that side isn't shown. Now, if you want to see the analogy between how this looks and how this looks, then play around with this a little bit, maybe even try to do a solve with this. It's pretty fun to get used to. 
It's also hard because, you know, the stickers on a piece are separated just like they are here, which is sort of what makes it confusing for beginners to look at this because who knows what's connected. But if you play around with this, you'll get an intuition and it highlights them anyway, so that's good. On the 3D cube, each side is a square, so the turns that you can do on that puzzle are just rotating the square and actually the layer with the square. So there's only like four different ways to rotate a square, right? Which is kind of boring. So bringing that up a dimension, each side here is actually a whole cube, and the rotations we're doing of each side is just rotating a cube. So we're rotating this cube sort of like XYZ rotations or just any rotations to get it to other positions. So here each side can be in 24 different orientations instead of just four. Now on this, if you play around with a bit, you might be super confused about oh, where do these colors come from, and why does it look weird when I do this weird control click rotation thing? Well, play around with the same exact thing on this puzzle. So what happens when you do a control click to rotate it like this? The shape sort of deforms and it moves around the outside that we can't really see. So this green just disappears because it's now facing towards us. But our brains can sort of understand the 3D rotation of this because we're used to it. We can see this as a 3D object, whereas on this we don't have understanding for this, so we don't see this as a 4D object, we see this as the sides. A good way to get used to this is by going up to scramble here and clicking on 1, and this will do a one move scramble to the puzzle. Here it's actually a slice move, so we can just go like that and it's solved. So once you can do one move scrambles on this, try and go to the 4D one and do one move scrambles and see what's happening. So here, we can see that something has to do with the orange, right? Because the pieces around the orange layer are messed up. So let's rotate orange into the center here. And we can see that it's sort of this way. So it's, uh, it's this. And there we go. So we'll get comfortable with doing one to two move scrambles on this and see if you can do them or not. Finally, Hyperspeed Cube is a wonderful program. Everything is customizable. It's so good. So you can customize the interaction, appearance, view, outlines, geometry, everything. So here is how I set up the program. I have it moved over to the right here because you can show the keybinds reference. I'm going to be using the keyboard for this solve because it's sort of faster than clicking with the mouse, but feel free to use either one you want to. I also have two custom keyboard sets that I used for speed solving this puzzle, but you definitely don't have to go that overboard if you don't want to. Finally, something that's really helpful is the piece filters here. So this is the piece filters menu. It's completely customizable. You can make different piece filters to hide other types of pieces while you're solving, which makes solving much easier because you don't have pieces that you don't want, you know, in the way. What looks more readable? This or, or this, you know? So it's much better. I will leave these in the description. All you have to do is copy the text and then click edit here and then edit as plain text and then you'll just be able to copy paste them in and then you should have them. And then you can set up a button on your keyboard to switch between them or you can just use this menu here. So make sure to get comfortable with everything I've talked about in this video. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or join the Hypercubers Discord server. And thanks for watching and I hope that you understand the four dimensional Rubik's Cube better now, I guess.